Cool, so uh, we're gonna start today's class in a wide legs child's pose. Um, at the back of our mat, toes together, knees nice and wide apart, and you can just set up uh, today a couple of things. Um, if you're finding that child's pose, you can get set up. It is thunderstorming super hard here, so you might hear some rumblings. Um, that's all it is, it's just mother nature uh, hydrating us. Um, so if you hear anything crazy in the background, that's all it is. It just started to pick up as the video started. Um, number two, um, for today's class, it might be nice to have some blocks handy. Um, so if you want to grab those and get set up on your mat, you're welcome to do so as well. Hi, welcome. I'm glad you're able to make it. Hello. Uh, today's class is going to be a, uh, a gay pride themed, pride month themed um, yoga class. We're gonna be doing some rainbows. We're gonna be making some rainbows. So uh, that's the idea that we're building with today's class. In these early moments though, as we just find this grounded posture on the mat, this nice easy child's pose, hips sinking back towards heels, palms reaching forward towards the top corners of the mat. Just start to drop into your breath, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Every inhale expands you a little wider and every exhale sinks you a little bit deeper down towards the mat. Nice and smooth, making those breaths as sweet as possible. Perhaps the first conscious breath we've taken today. So can you expand a little wider? If you're having any sort of um, any sort of early emotions here in class, if you're feeling anxious to get on the class, or if you're dreading, feeling like you don't want to move into more active postures today for whatever reason. Try to inhale and exhale and find a happy medium. Someone told me on the Instagram uh, that it always cuts me off at the end because I tend to go a little over the, the 59 minutes. Uh, so I just wanted to mention this at the end, at the beginning of class because it is um, Pride class and Pride month for today's class. Just switching it up. If you do practice and you do enjoy the class and you'd like to pay it forward, um, fundraising for the Alley 40 Center, uh, there's a link on Instagram. Um, I will also put it in the um, messages. Just an alternate to wherever you might be um, donating lately. Appreciate all donations. You can donate directly to them. You don't need to share with me. I appreciate it. I always love to hear when people do, um, but don't feel obligated to. And of course, you are always, always, always to welcome to pay it forward in non-financial ways as well. Maybe in these early moments of class, even if you have been donating financially, perhaps think about a way that after class, you will pay it forward to someone in your own life. Maybe that would be by posting something um, about pride and how you support equality, or sending a, a friend a message, or making food for someone you love sometime later this week, whatever that might be. Last three breaths here in this early child's pose, just to enjoy the groundedness and the ease here, and maybe to soak up that moment and that thought just a little bit more. Maybe we'll take a couple extra moments. You might be able to hear the thunder here on this end. It's really uh, calming and grounding. The nice um, rhythm of the rain on the roof. Inhale. And then last exhale, sink the hips back towards the heels. Tucking the toes, we're going to push straight back into a downward facing dog from here. Skipping the cat cow for today. Just pedaling it out, bending one knee and then the other. Sinking hips from side to side. 
just warming up and checking in with how you feel. If you're somewhere where it's also raining, maybe you feel, um, feel that stiffness that we tend to get in our body, that stiffness caused from rain is often due to inflammation in the body. Uh, so yoga helps with that. We're gonna be warming up the, the muscles and the joints and, and moving some of that fascia around. Baby aspirin, baby Advil rather, can also help with that. I'm not a doctor, but um, it is a, a Googleable fact. <laughs> but just check in with where you're feeling. We're gonna check in with that later on uh, in class as well. And then from here, inhale, right leg kicks straight back towards the back of your space, flexing through that right foot. And then exhale, step the right foot up towards the right hand. Bring the left knee down to the mat. Inhale to sweep the arm, the right arm up towards the sky, looking up over right shoulder. Inhaling through the full length of the spine and twisting the heart farther up towards the sky. Taking two more breaths here. Early on, early crescent twist. Especially since we haven't been doing any of those cat cows. So one more inhale here. And then exhale, right hand down to the mat. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, palms down to right thigh. And sink the hips forward towards the front of your space. Keeping a long, straight spine here. Pressing the hips forward and thinking about squaring the hips. I say this a lot, but it's always good. Inhale here. And then exhale, right knee back over right ankle, hips over left knee. Sweep left arm under right, taking the eagle wrap in the arms, either palms pressed together or backs of hands pressed or grabbing for opposite shoulder, whatever works. We're gonna uh, inhale to press the elbows farther away from the chest and up even with the shoulders, keeping a nice long straight spine. Maybe think about tucking the tailbone to get a little bit of a front of the left quad stretch here. One more inhale, and then we're gonna take those eagle wrap cat and cow. So we're gonna inhale to round through the spine, bringing elbows in towards belly button, head down towards ground, pushing hips forward. And then on your next inhale, separating elbows out into cactus arms, so you can look up, maybe feeling that prideful, joyous moment, and then exhale to wrap left arm under right again. Inhale to round through the spine, into that cat-like spine, and then exhaling to sink hips forward as we lift heart up towards the sky, and inhale to release into cactus arms. Again, what is a thing that you feel pride for in your own life? Maybe it's a person or a job or something that you do really well. Bring that in as you inhale into this next cat spine and exhale to sink hips forward. Inhale to lift chest back up. Last one, inhale here and then exhale. Release, right elbow comes to right thigh. Left arm reaches up and over towards the front of our space here. We're good. It's a modified gate pose. We're reaching left arm up and over and maybe pivoting left toes behind you over towards the right to get a nice long left side body stretch here. And then this is our first little rainbow that we're making. So left hand's gonna sweep up and over and behind us on the mat, coming about uh, the same distance between right foot and left knee behind you. And then we're gonna sweep right arm up and over, taking a stargazer pose towards the back of the mat. So stargazer, that right leg straightens, that left knee bends, hips bump up towards the sky, right arm reaches away from left fingertips behind you, and maybe even a head drops back. We're taking two more breaths here to really push hips forward and up, engaging the bum, and then on your next exhale, we're pivoting right hips 
stacks on top of left, right arm reaches towards the back of your space. It's a supported side plank on the left side. So right fingertips reach away from right toes. Inhale through a nice long right side body. And then you have options here. You might stay in the supported side plank. You might exhale and float right heel up off of the mat, even with right hips. So right uh, foot is lifted and right hand is lifted. Or you might even take the bound side plank, reaching behind you for your right ankle, trying to kick your own bum with that right heel. Wherever you are, we have three more breaths in this back uh, facing side plank. Nice and long, smooth breaths here. Check back in with the breath if you've lost it. And then after that third breath, gently releasing, right foot comes back to where it was towards the front of the space, pivot right toes towards the front, and then we tilt our upper body upward, and then bend the right knee to rainbow that left hand to the inside, pivoting left toes back towards the back of your space. So we're in this twisted crescent lunge again, right where we started. So that was a big old one. I'm going to show it one more time. So we're bringing right arm up and over, bending through right knee, left palm comes down inside of right foot, and we look up over right shoulder. One more inhale here, exhale, right hand comes down to the mat, back toes tuck, lift the left knee, inhale towards the front of your space, exhale, step left foot up to the top of the mat, forward fold, inhale, half lift, flat back, exhale, forward fold, Inhale, sweep the arms up over the head, palms press. Maybe exhale into cactus arms, elbows out towards the side. One more inhale to maybe look a little bit back. And then exhale, dive forward. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, press the palms, step both feet back, and move through a flow. Remembering knees can always come down to the mat in that chaturanga. Inhaling into upward facing dog and then exhaling back into downward facing dog. We're going to even that out on the left side. Nice long warm up sequence today. Inhale, left leg kicks straight back. Exhale, left foot replaces left hand. Right knee comes down to the mat and left arm sweeps up towards the sky, twisting towards the left this time, looking up and over left shoulder, but really pressing bottom hand down into the mat to twist through this whole left side. Again, maybe thinking about engaging the low belly, below the belly button, pulling it in so you can twist just a little bit farther up through uh, towards the sky. Take one more breath here, and then exhale, left hand comes down to the mat. Inhale, both arms sweep up. Exhale, palms to left thigh, and sink the hips forward towards the front of your space. And a reminder that you can always put padding underneath this knee, uh, this right knee, if you feel like the ground's a little hard, a little bit of padding there is good. It doesn't steal the stretch at all. Taking one more breath here, and then exhaling hips over right knee. This time, right arm sweeps under left, taking the eagle wrap on the opposite side. Palms press, backs of hands, hands to shoulders, whatever works, but we want to push the elbows away from the heart and lift them even with the shoulders to inhale into the space between the shoulder blades and that back side body. Really exaggerate these next two cycles of breath. See if you can push the elbows away to separate the, the shoulder blades behind your back and really expand that back side body. And then on your next inhale, rounding through the spine, pushing the hips forward, inhaling to look up and separate the arms, and then exhaling to sweep the right arm back under, 
and rounding down, pushing the hips forward. Inhaling to separate into cactus arms, feeling that pride in your heart. And then last one, exhale, round through the spine. Push the hips forward. Inhale, looking up. Big full breath. Exhale here, bring left elbow to left thigh. Right arm reaches up and over. Pivot right foot behind you. Modified gate pose, reaching towards the front of your space. Nice long line of energy from right knee all the way through right side body and through right fingertips. And then exhale, rainbow the hands towards the back of your space. Right hand comes down to the mat, about equidistance between right hand and right knee and right knee and left foot. From here, left leg starts to straighten, left arm reaches up and peels behind, taking a stargazer pose, bumping hips forward and up on a diagonal, engaging the glute, really stretching the solar plexus area between um, the bottoms of your ribs and the top of your belly button, maybe letting head drop back towards the back of your space. How does the world look like when it's upside down? Last inhale here, and then exhale, just rotating. Left hip comes on top of right. Left arm reaches towards the back of our space. So now we're in a supported side plank. If you have to make any adjustments with your hands or knees, that's totally fine. Sometimes, you know, the palm a little bit farther back or something might feel good. Find whatever works. Inhale, left fingertips away from left toes. Really reach like you could separate your left hand from your body. You could shoot off and you get longer and longer and longer into infinity. And then on your next inhale, whenever it comes, no rush. Maybe you take those modifications, floating left leg up off of the mat grabbing for left ankle behind your back. Whatever works, we're gonna take about three more breaths into this supported side plank, maybe a bound supported side plank, wherever you are. And then when we come out of this, we come out slowly, gently with control. I should have a recording of that to play it every single time we come out. But exhale, come out straight and left leg, reach left arm towards the back for one inhale, then pivot left toes towards the front. We've got another one of those rainbow twists. So we're tilting our upper body up and then we're bending to that left knee to bring right palm down and twist left arm up towards the sky, back to the front of our mat in this twisted crescent lunge. Take two more breaths here. See if you can twist, peel your heart a little more towards the sky. And then exhale, left hand comes down to the mat. Inhale to tuck back toes and lift back knee. Exhale, right foot meets left at the top of our mat. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, palms press above the head. Exhale, separate into cactus arms. Maybe inhaling to look up and maybe lean back just a little bit. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back, realign the spine. Exhale, plant the palms, step or hop the feet back and move through the flow. We'll meet back in a downward facing dog. And we're gonna build on that sequence just a little bit. So inhale into this down dog. You can find a little bit of uh, grounding here before we move into more of those swoopy backwards upside down rainbows. And then on your next inhale, right leg kicks straight back. Exhale, right foot replaces right hand. Left knee comes down. Inhale, sweep the right arm up. Crescent lunge twist again. Exhale, right hand comes down. Inhale, both arms sweep up. Exhale, right elbow to right thigh. 
left arm reaches up and over the head towards the front of our space. And we're moving from this crescent, crescent gate pose, really, into a side angle pose. So I'm going to talk us through, but basically we're tucking the back toes, lifting the back knee, pivoting left back foot over towards the right. So we've got kind of warrior two legs, left arm reaching up and over. I'm going to pivot so you guys can see. You probably found it earlier by now. Pivoting left arm reaches up and over towards the front of your space. Staying nice and low in this lunge. Back toes, left toes are uh, pointing straight over towards the left side of our space. So it's parallel with the back of the mat, the left foot. One more inhale here, maybe pivot heart a little bit more up towards the sky, and then exhale, tilt up, meeting in warrior two. Right leg is in front, we're in this traditional warrior two, we just came into it a little differently than we normally do, a little trickier. Inhale, sink nice and low, try to get that right thigh parallel to the mat. So we want to come nice and low into that lunge. Look for your big toe on the inside of your right knee. If you can see a sliver of your right big toe on the inside of your, of your knee, it means you're probably pretty close to that right angle. If you don't see any of your toes, it might mean that your knee is bumping in or out or you're too high up out of the lunge. Bumping in or out or too high up. One more breath in that warrior two to find it. I know, we're holding it for a while. And then exhale, flip the right palm, inhale, reach forward, exhale, tilt back into this peaceful warrior pose, right fingertips reaching away from right hip points. So we're trying to expand and extend our upper body like there's a giant beach ball directly to the left of our torso and we're reaching up and over it. Take one more breath here and then exhale, listen, rainbow the arms forward, I'm going to say that a thousand times, but left hand comes down to the mat, right arm is up, left hand is down, right arm is up. You might need to bring back heel up off of the mat, we're coming into a, uh, a revolved side angle. You might need to bring your back knee down to the mat, that's totally fine to come back into the crescent. But wherever you are, you're trying to pivot your heart up towards the sky. Take one more breath here, and then listen, tricky transition. We're going to kick the right foot back to the left and move into a side angle. Left leg is on the bottom, right leg is on top. You can always make it a supported side angle by bringing the left knee down. Otherwise, you can uh, stagger the feet. That can make it a little bit um, easier to balance if you're building strength and balance. Or you're stacking right foot on top of left and right arm is reaching up towards the sky. No matter what version you're doing, think about bumping bottom hip, left hip, up into right hip. Take one more breath here and then exhale, right hand comes down to the mat. Move through a flow. We'll meet back in downward facing dog where we're going to take that to the left side. Take one cycle of breath here just to even it out, just to find some grounding. And then on your next inhale, whenever it comes, no rush, kicking left leg straight back, flexing through left foot, and then exhaling to step left foot up in place of left hand. Right knee comes down to the mat, left arm sweeps up. We're in this revolved crescent twist, and we've been doing all of these revolved crescent twists because they're prepping us for that revolved side angle twist that we're going to do at the end of this sequence. So maybe here, see if you can peel a little bit more of your heart up towards the sky. One more inhale here, and then exhale, left hand comes down to the mat. Inhale, sweep both arms up. Exhale, left elbow to left thigh. Right arm reaches up and over. It's this modified side plank, and then we're moving it into the uh, full, not sorry, not side plank, side angle. <laughs> we're moving into the full 
side angle pose by tucking back toes, lifting back knee, and pivoting right heel down to the mat. So we're in this full side angle. Right fingertips are really reaching away from right toes. So you've got one big active line of energy all through that right side body. I say this a lot, but there's a big, huge difference between just getting into the lunge, you know, kind of st standing ourselves up on our left elbow, lifting the, the right arm, and when somebody's really reaching and stretching this right side body, it's core work, it's building the obliques, and it's stretching you out so that when you get in bed tonight, you're like, oh my gosh, it feels amazing to lie down. Take one more breath here, and then exhale, tilt up, warrior two left side. A few different adjustments because we've already talked through warrior two right side. Think about tucking tailbone under to engage the core. Think about rocking shoulders down and away, maybe knitting shoulder blades together behind the back. And then from here, think about pulling up on the inside arch of the back right foot. That's going to cause the right leg to engage, the right bum to engage. Take one more breath here, and then on your next inhale, you're flipping that left palm up towards the sky, tilting, reaching forward to grab for something you really, really want, and then exhaling to tilt back, coming into that peaceful warrior. And that peaceful warrior, it's like someone's gently nudging, pressing onto the right side, the back side, of your uh, body and it's fanning out the whole left side of your torso. So those ribs are peeling apart. You're kind of pushing your torso forward while you're leaning it back. Take one more breath here and then we wrangle both arms come over but right hand comes to the inside of left foot. Maybe back heel comes up off the mat. Maybe back knee comes, whatever you need, but we're pivoting heart up towards the sky. You can also use a block here underneath your hand if that helps. Um, if the, the stretch feels easy for whatever reason, that's when you start to try to bring your back heel down, which is going to make the stretch more intense on the outside of your left thigh and through your right side body. Take one more breath here, and then we've got that crazy transition into side angle. So we're rotating the, the right foot, the right heel comes down to the mat, the left foot kicks back, and we're in side angle on the right side. And again, we're not even side to side, so you might want to bring you know, your right knee down. Shoulder injury, if you have a shoulder injury, you might want to bring the right elbow down to take a, um, woo, a forearm side plank. It's going to be just as difficult on the, on the abs, but maybe a little, bit, um, a little bit gentler on the shoulder, depending on what's going on there. So take two more breaths in this side angle, really engaging the glutes, tucking the tailbone, extending through the spine, tucking the chin to get a nice long spine, and then exhale, left hand comes down to the mat, and we move through a flow. We'll meet back in downward facing dog, where we're gonna keep building on that a little bit more. So inhale, right leg kicks straight back. Exhale, right foot replaces right hand. Inhale, right arm sweeps up, look up. Exhale, right hand comes down. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, right elbow comes to right thigh, pivoting left foot behind the back, reaching left arm towards the front of our space. And then from here, moving into that side angle, inhaling, exhaling into warrior two, inhaling to flip just the front palm, tilt, reach forward, Exhale, meeting in that peaceful warrior. We are all peaceful warriors today. Inhale here, and then exhale, straight in right leg. So now we've got two straight legs. We're in a reverse triangle pose, it's called. Reaching right fingertips away from right toes. Inhale here, and then exhale. 
exhale, tilt forward. We're moving into a triangle pose. So triangle pose, you might want the blocks for. You might want to come into it a little slower. Right toes are pointing forward. Left toes, back toes are still pointing towards the left side of our space. And we want to think about pivoting heart up towards the sky in this triangle. So what I see happen in classes a lot is that people want to get low. They think the, um, we all think this really, um, the goal of, we think the goal of the pose is to like get our hand on the ground and like get really low, but it's not. The goal of the pose is to keep bumping right hip, front hip, back into left hip, and pivoting heart up towards the sky. If hips are square towards the sky, if front hip is bumping towards the back and heart is pivoting towards the sky, it doesn't matter how low we come into the pose, wherever you feel that resistance is an awesome place to be. Wherever you feel the stretch start to feel um, active is where the yoga starts and ends. That's the sweet spot. Take one more breath here. And then exhale. Wherever you are with that triangle, bring palms to press at heart center. So you might be kind of up here, you might be lower, wherever you are, palms press heart center. We're moving into a dandasana. So we're bending through left knee, keeping right leg straight. Right heel comes down to the ground. Right toes point up towards the sky, we're in a dandasana pose, it's called a staff pose. Also known as Rainbow Warrior from my uh, home studio of Laughing Lotus. Um, they call this one Rainbow Warrior. So perfect for our rainbow class. Um, right toes point straight up towards the sky. Elbows come inside of left leg. So I've been working on this one for a while. You might be a little bit uh, higher up, this is totally normal. You uh, come up out of it. The goal is to keep head on top of shoulders, on top of tailbone. So if you're lunging forward, you might want to come up a little higher and just start to um, move down with that alignment rather than rounding. If you're close, you can also use blocks to balance you here. Take one more breath. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a fun spider, spider crawl. We're gonna switch up the dimnasana. So bend through the right knee, straighten through the left leg, move it over to the other side, kind of like a Spider-Man move. Take another breath here. Exhale, move it back into that same direction, the original direction, left knee bends. We're moving from this into a half moon. So if you have blocks and you wanna take them, Take them with you. We are launching off of this bent left leg, coming up and over like a rainbow. Right hand comes down to the mat, left arm lifts up, left leg is lifted. Inhaling and exhaling, left shoulder stacks on top of right, left hip stacks on top of right, left foot stays flexed. Look at something that's not moving for balance. I accidentally caught myself on the corner of my eye and I wobble. So take a couple more breaths here in this half moon, and then exhale, meeting back in warrior two, landing that back foot in the mat, right knee bends, looking forward over right fingertips, exhale, windmill the left hand down to the mat, right arm sweeps up, back heel might come up, we're in this revolved side angle again. Take one more breath here, and then on your next exhale, we're kicking that right foot back, meeting in that supported side plank. Here we are again. We have options to switch it up. You might want to stick here. You might want to take a break, take a child's pose. You might want to lift your right leg up off of the left and reach right arm towards the front of your room so you're in this kind of flying starfish pose. Inhale, maybe lift a little higher. And then on your next exhale, move through a flow. We'll meet back in Downward Facing Dog. Super active, super prideful yoga flow today. Moving a little bit faster because we got the internet fixed finally. So hopefully it's not, um, it's not freezing uh, today. Inhale, left leg kicks straight back. 
Exhale, left foot replaces left hand, right knee comes down. Inhale, left arm sweeps up, look up. Exhale, left hand comes down. Inhale, coming up into this crescent lunge. Exhale, left elbow to left thigh. Straightening back leg, pivoting back heel to meet in side angle. On your next exhale, meeting in warrior two. Inhale uh, to reach forward and then exhale to meet in peaceful warrior. Left arm on top, left knee is bent. Inhaling to sink a little lower into this peaceful warrior. And then exhaling, straightening left leg, two straight legs. Taking a couple of breaths here in this reverse triangle, again to truly reach left fingertips away from left toes. And then exhale, tilting forward, meeting in a triangle pose on the mat, or on the, towards the front of the mat. And again, I've said this a lot before, but just a reminder, it's always okay to have a micro bend in the legs and the knees whenever it's a straight leg. A little bit of a teeny tiny micro bend is always a good way to just protect the knee. And triangle pose, I said this a little bit on the other side, but it's a pose that I truly always believe benefits from taking it slowly and moving in slowly. Because even I, when I've done yoga already once today, and do yoga all the time, can't stop talking about yoga, um, when I come straight into triangle pose, my, my alignment's off, I can feel it when I think about it. Easier to start nice and slow and slide into it, keeping that alignment, keeping that those hips square towards the side instead of rolling forward to keep that hip, uh, heart pivoting up instead of rotating down. To keep that front hip bumping into back hip rather than bumping backwards behind you. Take another breath here in this triangle pose. And then we're going to move into the rainbow warrior, into the Nandasana by exhaling palms to heart center. We're in the sideways prayer pose and then we bend through the right leg, meeting in a Dandasana at the back of our mat. Keeping a nice long straight spine, tailbone underneath heart, underneath head, elbows hooked inside of right knee if you've got that. Otherwise, again, a little higher up is totally fine. You, the, the toes coming up off of the mat just kind of helps to keep engagement through that right leg. So you can keep tapping them down and bringing them up if you're building strength and balance wherever you are. Trying to sink a little bit lower, bum points back and then points down towards the ground. Take one more breath here and then we're going to do that spider crawl. So you might want to release the hands or you might try to play with keeping palms pressed as you pivot, left foot comes down to the mat, bend through left knee as you straighten right leg, trying to make it as smooth as possible. I also think of this as kind of like a spy ninja pose when they go through those, um, those rooms with like the laser beams and they have to like dodge it. This sort of feels like we're dodging laser beams a little bit. Um, take one more, end up right where we were with right knee bent, left leg towards the front of the mat. If you want to bring a block with you, we're going to launch off of this right foot, meeting in a half moon at the front of our mat. It's meant to be tricky. It's meant to cause us to wobble and balance. There's maybe some people who could do it super smooth, but this is uh, supposed to be playful. So if you wobble, just take it as an opportunity to try again and build those muscles. We're in this half moon pose. Our right hand stacked on top of our right shoulder on top of our left. Bottom leg can always have, left leg can always have a micro bend, but try to keep right leg, lifted leg, nice and straight, flexing through that right foot to engage that right glute, to stack right hip on top of left, so not rolling hips down, stacking right hip on top of left. One more big breath here, and then exhale, launch that right foot back, meeting in warrior two, left leg bent. Inhale here, exhale, right hand comes down inside of left leg, so we're 
in the revolved side angle, looking up over lifted left shoulder. Inhale here, look up a little bit more. And then exhale, kick that left foot back, Oop, meeting in a side plank on the right side. And we've got about four more breaths here to play with any variations. Lifting left arm over left ear, lifting left leg, got that flying starfish pose. Maybe seeing if you can lift a little higher, maybe bringing gaze up towards the sky to truly challenge balance. And then maybe two more breaths. We're going to eventually come out of this on an exhale and move through a flow, meeting back in downward facing dog. And once you get there, no rush. You're always welcome to take a child's pose, a little bit of a break if, you're ch if your breath gets choppy or held. But otherwise, we've got one more of those on right and left side. You can do it, and then we slow it way down. So inhale, right leg kicks straight back. It moves faster this time, I promise. Exhale, right foot comes down to the mat. Inhale, right arm sweeps up, look up. Exhale, right hand comes down to the mat. Inhale, rainbow up. Crescent uh, lunge, exhale, right elbow to right thigh, sorry. Inhale, left arm towards the front of the room, and then exhale, straightening left leg, pivoting left heel down, side angle towards the front of our space. Inhale here, and exhale, tilting arms up, coming into warrior two. On your next inhale, reach forward, Exhale, tilt back into peaceful warrior. Inhale, sit low. Exhale, straighten right leg, reverse triangle. Inhale, right fingertips away from right toes. And then exhale, tilt forward into triangle. Inhale to look up over lifted left shoulder. Exhale, palms come to press at heart center. Inhale into staff pose, bending left knee to straighten right. Exhale to launch off of back foot, meeting in half moon pose towards the front of our space. So we have some options for this half moon. We got here a lot quicker. <laughs> that was intentional. We have some time to play. You might want to take the sugar cane variation by bending left knee to try to kick your own bum with your lifted left heel to grab for left ankle. Option one. If you have that, think about stacking left hip on top of right. Think about kicking left foot into left hand. Maybe bottom hand comes up off of the mat for to grab left ankle as well to take the full moon variation. Some days we have it, some days we don't. Uh, other options to challenge balance would be to look up over lifted left shoulder or to float bottom hand up off of the mat to rest on heart. Take one more breath in whatever version you have. And then we're exhaling to kick that left leg back, plant on the ground, meeting back in warrior two. Inhale, sit nice and low. Exhale, rainbow arms over. Left hand comes inside of right arm. Meeting in that side angle twist, looking up over right shoulder. One breath here. And then on your next exhale, rotating the outside of left foot to kick right foot back. We're in a side plank. Left side again, last one. You can make that starfish. Or maybe you want to take the bind, grabbing for right ankle behind your back to kick behind you. We've been building towards this side plank, full moon, bound pose if you want to try. Other options would be to take peace fingers around big toe and kick that right leg up towards the side as well. Or maybe you just want to build a tree pose, bringing right heel to the inseam of left thigh. Take one more breath, and then 
Meet back in a downward facing dog. Take a flow. Whatever works. All we've got to do is even it out on the left side. And then we get to chillax. So whenever you meet back up with us, we're inhaling left leg, kick straight back. Exhale, left foot replaces left hand. Right knee comes down to the mat. Inhale, left arm sweeps up, look up. Exhale, left hand down. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, left elbow to left thigh. Right arm sweeps up. We're a little half rainbow towards the front of our space. And then exhale to straighten back leg. Pivot back heel down, true side angle. Exhale to warrior two. Inhale, flip the front palm and reach. Exhale, tilt back into peaceful warrior. Inhale, sit a little lower. And then on your exhale, straightening through left leg. Inhale to reach left fingertips away from left toes. And then exhale, tilting upper body into triangle pose. Inhale to look up over lifted right shoulder. And then exhale, make that prayer in front of the heart. Inhale to bend through back knee into Dandasana pose. And then our exhale, we launch off, meeting in um, the half moon on the left side. Whatever that means for you. And those options are available to you. I'm going to offer one more variation. If you have the sugar cane pose, grabbing right ankle, kicking into right hand, you can also slowly, smoothly transition into a dancer pose on your mat. The grips of the hands is a little off. It's not what we usually do in my classes, but if you want to try the pivot, it's the difference between having one leg stacked on top of the other, one hip stacked on top of the other, and uh, both hips square towards the ground. We've got about two more breaths. I'm going to show that one more time in case you want to try the sugar cane. You're just grabbing for that right ankle, and we're stacking right hip on top of left. And then if you want to try to play, it's just rotating the squaring of the hips towards the front. Right, catch a shadow of yourself in the window and it might make you wobble. That happens, that's part of the yoga. And then on your next exhale, just release that right leg back, meeting a warrior two. Left leg in front, looking over front fingertips. Exhale, right hand comes down inside of left foot. Left arm reaches up for this twisted side angle. And then exhale, right uh, edge of right foot comes back down to the mat. Inhale, into the side plank. And then you have all of those options. You might take the starfish, as I like to call it. You might want to try the tree. You might want to do the two-piece fingers around big toe and start to kick and straighten left leg or that bind we've been working towards is yours to play with as well. Kicking into left hand. We've got about three more breaths to play with whatever version makes sense to you. No rush, but when you finished your third version, bring the left hand down to the mat, move through a flow, holy smokes, that was a class. We are slowing it down just a little bit, maybe a lot of it. Inhale into this downward facing dog, exhale, bring both the knees down to the mat, in towards each other, touching. We're gonna take a half tortoise Child's pose. So knees and thighs together. Bring the forehead down to the mat. Reach the arms back towards the back of the mat. Palms face up. And just take about three breaths here into this rounded back 
spine, feeling your heartbeat onto your legs. Every inhale, extend the spine, and every exhale, sinks the weight of the body down deeper into the mat. Take one more here, and then cup, the, cup your heels with your hands. So grab the soles of your feet with your hands. And then from here, we're gonna roll onto the tippy top of our head and push our hips forward. Uh, we're in a rabbit pose, it's called. So our spine is super rounded. We're grabbing our heels and our hips are trying to push towards the front of the room, towards the top of the mat. And that's gonna be a really nice back and shoulder stretch and the space between our shoulder blades and our upper spine. The difference between just grabbing your hands and pushing the hips up and really pulling your feet but pushing your hips is the difference between feeling this posture and not. So it's not just a gentle grab, it's you're really holding on and your hips are trying to push towards the front of the room. Take one more breath here and then exhale. Press palms into the mat underneath shoulders. Come to standing on the heels. We're gonna take a camel pose to balance that out. So camel pose, just a reminder if you haven't done it or haven't done it lately, it's a back bend and we don't like to look side to side while we do back bend. So if you wanna watch the video and then join us, there will be time. So camel pose, knees are hips with distance. Bring two fists together, put them between your knees. So the knees are hips with distance, that's the right uh, width of your knees. And then toes, I like to say tucked, especially if we're building flexibility. Tucked gives us a little bit more flexibility. Toes tucked, palms come to the low back. Pinkies point down, or fingers point down, and pinkies are in. Bring the heels of the hands, the bottom of the hands, underneath your lowest rib. Then try to bring the pinkies together to touch if possible. They might not, that's totally fine. Uh, wherever they are, try to pull the elbows together behind the back. This is gonna really open up the heart space. It's like our hands are in super high mom jean pockets. Inhale here, and then exhale, push the hips forward towards the front of our space. We don't lean back at all. We just push the hips forward. Eventually, the hips push so far forward that our heart starts to peel up towards the sky, that our gaze starts to go towards the sky. You keep pushing the hips forward. You never lean back, but eventually gaze traces the ceiling or the sky back to the back wall or the horizon. And then if you see the spot where the horizon meets the land or the back wall meets the floor, then maybe one hand comes to one ankle and the other hand comes to the other ankle and you have your hands on your ankle in camel. You don't need to get there wherever you are in your camel is where you are feeling the stretch and that's the perfect place to be. Take three more breaths in and out through the nose in this camel and then when you're done, we come out as always the way we came in. One hand comes to the low back, then the other, unraveling, pulling hips under shoulders, sinking hips back down to heels, putting the backs of hands to thighs, palms face up, and close your eyes for a second, tucking chin. Take about three breaths to let the heart uh, rate calm down a little bit, to, um, to regain your breath. You might feel a little dizzy after camel, that's totally normal. Uh, it's a parasympathetic response in the body where we can stretch the airway as we do when we lean our throat back. So if you're feeling that, don't worry, it'll pass. Happens to me almost every single time. And then take one more breath here before you rotate heels out towards the sides and then kick them straight forward. We're gonna do a forward fold right here. So inhale, arms reach straight up and then exhale, forward fold, grabbing for the feet. This is a really 
juicy counter stretch to the camel back bend. So we did that rabbit pose where we had our head on the ground and we're grabbing our heels and that was a really exaggerated rounding of the spine. And then we did camel, which is a really exaggerated arching of the spine. And now we're taking it back and kind of sandwiching that super deep back bend with another rounding of the spine in this forward fold. And a little bit of hamstring stuff here as well. Take about two more breaths in this Dandasana pose. And then exhale after that second one, gently releasing, coming back up to an upper, upper spine, upper, upper facing spine. Uh, bring the heels onto the mat, knees point up. And we're gonna do just a little teeny tiny bit of core work to seal out our practice. So inhale, reach the arms forward. Exhale, we're coming down to the mat on a count of five, four, three, two, one, and then from here, we're inhaling and straightening the legs, hovering them off of the ground. Inhale, exhale, pull them all the way up. Inhale, bring them down and hover. Inhale, pull them all the way up. Exhale, bring them down to hover. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, down to hover. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, down to hover. Inhale, all the way up. Trying to keep this nice and slow, down to hover. We're not letting gravity do the work. Inhaling them up. Exhale, down to hover. We've got three more. Inhaling them back up. Exhaling down to hover. Inhaling back up. Exhale down to hover. Last one, listen for the change. Inhale back up. Exhale, down to hover, and then you've got scissor kicks. So kicking right leg over left, and then alternating. We've got 20 seconds of these. If you want to make them harder, you can come up a little bit and bring your lower body off of the mat as well. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release. Release, release, release. Hug your knees into your chest. Pull yourself into a teeny tiny ball. Give your body a nice big hug. Squeeze it nice and tight. Pull your forehead in towards your knees. Inhale into this tiny little ball. And then whenever you're ready, we're gonna exhale and set up the Savasana. So heels come out super wide. The width of the mat, maybe even wider for today might feel good. Toes flap open, arms either extend out the sides of the body, palms face up, or maybe you want one hand on top of belly and one hand on top of heart, or maybe you want to cactus arms out towards the sides to call back that joyous, prideful heart opening. Or last option, sometimes I like to take a savasana with my uh, arms above my head, grabbing for opposite elbow. That might feel good, also a little bit heart opening and a little bit of a nice um, shoulder relaxation pose. Wherever you are, make sure the eyes are closed. Inhaling and exhaling. Every inhale, you sink a little bit deeper. Every exhale, let a little bit more tension come out of the body from anywhere. It doesn't serve you.